In May is Osteoporosis Awareness Month, and here to tell us more about it is Dr. Agnes Solon Ashby, rheumatologist at Friedman Clinic in Alexandria. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Of course. Yes. Well, so uh, there's a lot to talk about here with osteoporosis there and is. bone health. Tell us a little bit about this Awareness Month and what's so important. So osteoporosis is one of those things that I love to take care of because it's such a preventable disease. It really has a big impact. I don't know if you're aware, but one in two women in the U.S. have over 50 break bones. One in four women, uh, four men over 50 break bones. And 42% 40 per, of admissions in the hospital are actually from osteoporotic fractures. So surprisingly, only 26% from heart attacks, 24% from strokes. So it's really a more, much more common thing that we're aware of. A lot of times people, people think that, oh, well, you know what, it's just part of aging. I'm fracturing or I'm, I'm shrinking or I have a hump in my back. I don't know if your grandmother had a hump in, my, in your back, but my grandmother, grandmother did. And, um, but it's a, so by definition, it's a um, porous bone. So I have a bone uh, model right here. So this right here is normal bone and this is brittle bone. So you can understand how patients can shrink or you can, sh I can't shrink anymore because I'm already <laughs> short as it is. So you can preserve your height by building up your bone mass. So it's really not part of aging anymore. So how do we do that? We check a bone density. So here's a graphic of normal bone and this is brittle bone. So you can see how much easier it is to break this. A DEXA scan is a very simple 10 to 15 minute um, scan that can tell you where you are at your fracture risk. So um, in the past we would find osteoporotic uh, patients from a random chest x-ray but by the time it shows up on a plain x-ray 30 percent of your bone mass is gone so we're playing catch up here. So um, who should get a DEXA? Anybody who's uh, postmenopausal, anybody over 50, if you have any kind of risk factors such as long-term steroid use, or if your mother has had a broken hip, or if you have very early menopause, people have hysterectomies at 20s or 30s, you know, so, so we should alert our doctors to get a DEXA. Um, the problem with this is it's such a silent disease, and once it manifests itself as a break, it's too late. Well, it's not too late. We can always do something about it, but, but we'd be playing catch up. And so I just want you to show again right here um, the difference in the bones that have, you know, osteoporosis. And yes, so this is right here is normal bone mass. You see how solid this is? So you can understand how much, how, if, if, for example, you have bones that are like this. This is so much brittle. So this is what happens when we have a fragility fracture. A fragility fracture is a very low trauma fracture. I've had a patient break a vertebrae because she was sitting on the commode and she sneezed. So just that pressure enough oh was no. enough to break a vertebrae. I had a gentleman who was over, um, I think he must have been 85 or something. He was walking to the bathroom and hit his hip on his footboard and had a, a break. So he comes waddling in and he says, I have, I think I have arthritis. And so we get a, an x-ray and sure enough, he has a hip fracture. Oh, wow. Yes, or somebody who, who comes in and says, um, my foot's been swollen for so long, for like how long, two weeks. Well, have you fallen? No. And then we get an x-ray and there she is. She's a, she has a broken toe. And, and there's no history of trauma. It's because, I mean, you can understand if it's brittle like this, it's not hard to break it. But right. the good news is we've got so many different therapies. The better news is, is we have a way of um, actually diagnosing the silent disease. That is fantastic. And yes. so if someone is interested in coming to get a checkup and, and possibly that scan too to yes. see, yes. Um, what's the best way to do that? Can um, they do that here? Yes, absolutely. So there are very, very many institutions that have bone densities or DEXA machines, but the really important thing is that to make your family physician or primary care physician aware that you know what, I menopause, I had a hysterectomy when I was 25 and I wasn't really in hormones. Um, bone loss occurs as early as, you know, the first year after menopause. So actually 20% of your bone mass is gone within the five, first five to seven years after you menopause. So playing catch up is really hard. So. Um, when you go to the doctor and you talk about your high blood pressure and your cholesterol and your thyroid and oh I gained some weight can you put me on something to lose weight well talk to them about your bone mass or else too um, another simple way is to have them check your height 
people come in and um, we check their heights for their first visits and, and we tell them, oh, you're 5'3", and they're like, no, no, I'm not, I'm 5'6". <laughs> and sure enough, we check x-rays and they've had compression fractures without even knowing it. Wow. So height measurements annually is a very simple way to measure. And it seems something that can be preventative oh, very much if so. you start screening early enough. Very much so. So prevention-wise, um, dairy products, calcium and vitamin D, um, exercise so they actually have a study that showed that they check bone densities in patients who've had um, a stroke so the paralyzed side actually had lower bone mass than the non paralyzed side so wow. weight bearing exercises help um, uh, build up your bone taking away things like tobacco um, drinking more than three alcoholic drinks a day you know so there are certain things we can't alter um, with risk factors such as being Caucasian or being postmenopausal or being a female, because, which is a risk factor, but there are so many different things that we can alter and modify to make us keep our bone mass. Fantastic. And so is there a resource out there if people want to learn more about this? Yes. So the National Osteoporosis Foundation, um, it's nof.org. You can go in there and there's several different ways of um, just educating ourselves. Um, Amgen is, uh, I'm not trying to make a clip here, but they're, they're just very f um, forward with prevention and then um, educating patients. One thing I want to point out though, a lot of patients who've been diagnosed stop their treatments because they get scared of the side effects. Mm. So um, there's one thing that's called the osteonecrosis of the jaw where your jawbone actually dies and caves out on you. I mean, it's horrible. You look at pictures on the internet, you Google ONJ and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to take this medication anymore. But I remind them, what are we doing this for in the first place? You're one in two chance of having a fracture. What is the chance of having an ONJ? One in 100,000. Oh, so, wow. in, like everything else, you weigh risks and benefits, you know? So, you kind of try to bite the risk because your benefit is so much more. Absolutely. Well, yes. some great information yes. and a great resource, too. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on the thank show and telling us me. all about it. We appreciate it so much. Yes. Thank you. Of course, we have more to come on Good Days in Law. Stay right here.